Hey everybody, thank you for stopping by my channel. A square pillow isn't square. This is the place where you will learn anything and everything you wanted to know about home deck sewing. Today's project is one I've been promising to do and it's how to make a basic Roman shade. Before I get started, please just hang in there one second for me. I do want to say that there's a safety disclaimer with this video. Um, this is a very basic shade using strings and cords, no safety mechanisms at all. Um, and so if you are making a shade, please, like this one, please do not uh, install it in any place where you may have a baby, a toddler, a small child that can get access to the cords. Having said that, Roman shades are super easy. You'll be really surprised how easy they are. Um, and just one of the most versatile, tailored, beautiful kinds of window treatments that you can make for both privacy, light control, and beauty. Um, all it needs is a few special materials. That's what's tricky about it. Not the fabrication of it, but the supplies that you need to make them. You have to be patient when you're making a Roman shade because even though each individual step is very easy unto itself, there are a lot of individual steps. So, just take your time and I know you can do it. Okay, first let's go through the supplies and materials that you're going to need to make the shade. First, of course, you need fabric and lining. I like to use a medium weight, tightly woven fabric for stability. And I yet like to use white lining to ensure that all of my white cords and white rings and everything looks nice and non-obtrusive from the outside. And white lining also doesn't alter the color of your face fabric when light's passing through it. I did some videos on lining. If you want to check those out, I'll link to those here. Okay, so you've got your fabric and your lining. The next thing you're going to need are some Roman shade rings. Again, I like these little white plastic ones. They hold up really well and they don't show on the back of the shade from the outside. Next thing you'll need is some shade lift cord. Now, this is specifically for Roman shades um, and fabric shades of all kinds. And what makes it different than just string or something else that you might want to use is that it's made of polyester so that it resists sun rot and it's also braided which makes it smooth to reduce friction and it also doesn't stretch so Roman shade lift cords a must I usually keep two different weights in stock um, one is a uh, nine millimeter and I use that for small or lightweight shades and then I keep some 1.4 millimeter around for heavier or large shades uh, you'll also need some upholstery weight thread. I use a nylon or a polyester upholstery weight thread. Again, uh, white so that it all blends with the lining. Um, you'll need some fabric glue and you'll need a mounting board. The size mounting board you need depends on the projection that you want this shade to come away from your wall. I like shades to be as tightly mounted as possible to the wall to reduce uh, light gap on the sides. Um, so when possible, I use a 1x2 like this one. You'll need some screw eyes. You will need either a tension lock or a cord cleat to secure your shade when it's lifted. Um, and then there's two ways that you can mount the shade to the board. One is with Velcro, and if you opt for Velcro, I use a sticky back, hook side, and sew on loop side. If you don't want to use uh, Velcro, you want something more permanent and you're not afraid of power tools or tools of any kind, I almost always use a staple gun. This is a pneumatic staple gun which is run by an air compressor. This is an upholstery weight, an upholstery staple gun. It uses nice small thin wire staples, but you can also use an electric staple gun if you want to use that instead of Velcro. And last but not least, um, we will need some kind of a weight rod. There's a variety of things that you can use. I've used everything from a piece of white oval curtain rodding like this. You can use a fiberglass baton or rod like this. You can use a flat aluminum bar if you like. Um, I wouldn't recommend a wooden, wooden dowel. They're super lightweight. They can bend and they just don't have enough weight to them. Um, there's also specifically a 3 8 inch brass Roman shade weight rods. They're a little bit pricey, 
but they're a really nice option too. I don't have a sample here to show you, but um, because I've I've just <laughs> gone to using this uh, oval curtain rotting that I buy in 12 foot sticks. It's real economical. All right, I think I have gone over all the supplies. Next thing we're going to do is figure out the cuts for our fabric and lining. All right, before we get started, let me just say that this is one of many ways out there to make Roman shades. Mine may not be the best, mine may not be the right way for you, but it's worked for me for well over 40 years. Um, I make it this way because it's quick, it's easy, it's accurate, and it is the fastest way that i found to do it. I also, just so you know, I'm basing my cut measurements on a couple of things. One is that I'm going to use standard 8 inch ring spacing on the back of my shade, and the other is that I'm going to use a full double hem that extends 2 inches below the bottom fold. So having said that, let's go ahead and cut our fabric. First thing you'll do is determine the finished width and length of your shade. In my case, I'm just going to make a sample shade. It's 24 inches wide and 36 inches long. Take those measurements and for your face fabric you will add 14 inches to the length of your finished shade and 3 inches to the width. And that will be your cut dimension for your face fabric and for your lining. You will add 2 inches to the length and you will add 2 inches to the width. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and get started making this thing. Alright, I've got my fabric cut. Um, I'm going to put the wrong side down. And one of the reasons I like making my shades this way is that I don't have to move my shade until it's almost all the way finished. By not moving your shade, you're not going to risk shifting the layers of fabric and lining and having any kind of puckering or any uneven, unevenness on the shade. So I make the whole thing almost on the table, almost all the way through. So I'll show you what we do. Right side over, make sure it's nice and flat and straight. First thing I'm going to do is fold in one and a half inches with an iron on each side of the shade. And as you can see, I've also centered my pattern. Another thing to think about with your shade is where you want your patterns to fall or how you want them to be centered. So I have a nice dark blue stripe that's going to be right in the middle of the shade. I fold in an inch, press in an inch and a half on one side, and I can actually, just by looking at the pattern, know exactly where to press it in other, on the other side. Obviously, you'll use a little sewing gauge or ruler to do this on most fabrics. But, press in one and a half inches, nice and straight on both sides of your shade. Next thing you're going to do is fold up 12 inches on your bottom hem. And press that in. Open that back up, and now center your lining on your fabric, and you're going to start at the fold that you just pressed, and just center it on the back, and you'll notice now that you've um, put your side hems in, it's just going to extend about half an inch on both edges. So just make sure that is nice and even and straight. Then the next thing I do is I fold in about one inch. And when you fold in one inch, what you'll see will happen is that your lining edge will line up with your uh, fabric edge here, and your, your lining is going to come in about half an inch from the edge. The reason you want your lining to come in a little bit is so that you don't see the edge of that white lining on the side of your shade. So <laughs> I've got these awesome stripes that I can just visually look at, which is making this super easy. 
but just turn in half an inch on each side like this and press it with an iron and do that Oops. and do that on the other side as well. Um, alternately, you can also just press in an inch on both sides of your lining first and then lay it on your shade and just center it. That might be easier for you. Alright, this next thing that I do, when I had an employee that, that showed me this trick one time and I really thought she was crazy and I thought it was just a very unprofessional way to make a shade and boy was I wrong. Um, get yourself some really good fabric glue uh, and um, what I do next is I will run a bead of fabric glue along the edge of the lining. You can, of course, sew your hems in place if you want to, but again, now you're going to have to pin and pick up your shade and move it and that shifts everything around. You could also use some kind of fusible webbing if you want to and iron on the hems. But, like, why buy all that stuff when fabric glue works fantastic, it's easily available, it's very economical, and it just works perfectly for this project. So I'll just run a bead of glue along one edge and roll it back down and do the same thing on this side. And I'm sorry I doubted you, employee of mine. Shout out to uh, Louisville, Texas, where I had my drapery shop for several years and where this employee happened to work for me at the time. Um, so you can learn a lot from people if you're open to it. So this was one of these tricks I love. Now just fold that down and if you run a steam iron over it, what happens is the steam kind of forces the glue into the back layer, helps distribute it, but it will not bleed through to the front. You've got, you know, your hem layer here. I don't use a real heavy bead. Um, and you'll see too that my Roman shade rings are going to be sewn onto this hem and that will act as extra insurance. Every place there's a ring sewn, I'm tacking all these layers together. And in all my years, I've never had rings come undone. I've never had hems come undone. So boom, side hems are done without even moving your shade. Okay, the next thing I do is I am going to finish my bottom hem. Now fold up your bottom hem to your fold. Press. And fold it again. Um, actually, another little trick I do sometimes, let me show you this one. So as you've noticed, when I fold this up, this hem comes all the way to the edge of the shade. And sometimes when you're sewing this on, the back can actually overlap the front a little bit and it can look kind of unprofessional. Sometimes what I'll do on this lower part of the hem is I'll actually taper the fold in a little bit like this. little trick. That ensures that when I fold this hem up, it's definitely going to be shorter on the back and you will not have any problems with the hem overlapping the side edge. Actually, you can also at this point either staple to hold it or just pin your top layers in place because we are at well, some point going to take this off the table and I don't want my fabric to shift. So I like to put my first, first we're going to measure horizontally for our rows of rings. This is a really small shade. Um, I'm probably, and it's a nice stiff fabric, so I'm probably just going to do three rows of rings. I tend to try and want to stick to about 
10 inch ring spacing. Um, 9 to 11, anywhere in that range is good. Um, and I'm also going to start my first row of rings about an inch from the outside. Now, this doesn't need to be, you know, rocket science. So, for instance, if I put, you know, a pin there and a pin here, okay, that's my one inch in. That's 22 inches. In my case, um, if I'm going to do three rows of rings, I have to just divide that number in half. 11 inches works out perfectly. If your, if your math works out where you've got some weird fraction and you've got a much wider shade and it's hard for you to divide, don't be afraid to slide, you know, to slide this first ring over a little bit. The important thing is you just don't want it too close to the edge where you're not catching the lining and you can see it from the side of the shade. But as long as your ring falls anywhere on this wide one inch hem, you can adjust these measurements a little bit. So in my case, I'm doing three, uh, three rows. That means I will divide this right down the middle. So I know I need a row of rings an inch from the edge, an inch from the edge, and right in the middle in my case. At the very bottom here, my first ring is going to be right at this fold. I'm going to make a mark at one, right there, one inch in. And also, here's another tip. Get right on top of what you're marking because your perspective can even change things and make it off an eighth to a quarter of an inch. So it's good to just get right on top of it if you can't walk around to the other side. And I'm going to make my mark there and one right in the middle. So that's going to be where my rings are. And I'm going to do that again at the top. One inch in from each side. And once in the middle. Now I'm going to mark my vertical rows. You're going to put a ruler or a straight edge from dot to dot like this. And I'm going to start on an even inch mark so it helps me count. And I'm just going to, I've got a nice straight line here between my two dots, and I'm just going to mark every eight inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one's way up here. So this is actually, this one will end up being our last fold. Again, line up your next row of dots like this. And we are going to go ahead and just make a little mark. but not least on this row as well. Let's see. Yeah, eight. Sixteen. Eight. My nice straight rows, they're gonna line up in both directions. And the next thing you'll do is we are going to sew our rings on. Now get your nice strong thread and you can do this a couple of ways. You can sew them on individually, or you can sew them on um, using a running stitch method, uh, like I show in my uh, other YouTube video. It goes into more detail. So that video goes into more detail about um, the different threads that you need and the method that I use to do this. But either way, you're going to double your thread. And I'll just... Um, I'll sew one on here just to show you. You'll simply come in right before your dot and come up right after your dot. And normally I wouldn't move my shade, but you can see on here that there's a very, very, very small tack. It won't even be noticeable. So the key is to go through both layers um, using as small of a stitch as possible to catch them both. and. If you use a strong thread like this one and you use a double layer, 
you don't even have to tie a knot first. What I usually do is I just snip it, put my ring on, and do a double overhand knot. Twice left over right and twice right over left. And with a little practice, you get to where you can do this super fast. Ring is sewn on. So I will either do that individually with each ring, or um, let me find my, my ends here. On this row, I'll show you. And um, by the way, I'm going to sew them on with the exception of this bottom one. I'll show you how I do this bottom one just a little bit differently. But on the body of the shade, you can sew them on individually like that, or you can do a continuous running stitch like this. Just make sure you get all your layers. You can kind of feel it. Like that. And just snip between your threads and tie them on the same way. So I'm going to sew all my rings on. I'm going to tie them on like that, and then we're going to do the ones on the bottom. Now that all the rings are sewn onto the body of the valance, trim your tails of your threads to about half an inch. Take that same fabric glue that you used for your side hems and just put a little tiny dot of glue on each knot. A little bit of insurance, there it is, that your knot won't ever come undone. And do that on all of them. So what we're going to be doing next is sewing both the pocket for the weight rod and the hem to the shade. Um, I'm going to move these pins down a little bit so that this flap is free to move, but I still want to keep everything lined up. So I'm just going to put these pins down here. Now, the first thing I have to do is determine how big of a pocket I need for my weight rod. Obviously, let me grab these again, depending on you know what you're doing the size of the pocket's going to vary quite a bit. So I'm just going to um, base it on using this piece of stick oval rotting. And it's got a little bit of thickness to it. So I mean, I'm not going to make this super tight. Um, I'm probably going to allow about a, a one inch pocket for this. I want as little stitching as possible showing on the front of the shade. So I'm actually going to make the bottom seam of the pocket just on the flap here. So you can take a piece of chalk or a disappearing ink pen. We are going to be sewing our hem to our shade close to this fold. So you want to measure down from about where that stitching line is going to be. And I'm going to add about an inch. So I'm going to just mark this at about an inch and an eighth. I'm going to sew that other stitching line really close to about an eighth inch to the eight inch, an eighth of an inch from the fold. And you can draw a line or you can use the gauge, a gauge at your sewing machine. So I'm going to take this to the machine. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to stitch on this line. And then I'm going to lay this back down and stitch all my layers together close to the fold. If you have a fabric like mine and you want to reduce the amount of stitching that's showing, you can use invisible thread or you're going to want to use the closest color match thread you can for this step. So as you can see, I'm pulling this hem away. And I'm going to, I'm using invisible thread stitch a little bit here. I'm just going to sew on that line. Now the 
with that's done, I'm going to just sew, sew close to the fold and sew my hem onto my shape. If you need to, certainly feel free to pin this hem in place. This fabric's just real easy to work with and it's not moving. All right. Now that that's done, I don't need my pins anymore. And let's go sew our last bottom row of rings on. Okay, when I sew the last row of rings on, I do it just a little bit differently. I'm going to still um, double thread my needle and put a knot in the bottom, more traditional way that people would think of for sewing rings on. And what I'm going to do is, I can still see my little pencil mark here, I'm going to go through both layers of my shade and I'm also going to catch the fold. I don't know if you can see that. Catch the fold of the hem. This is just to add strength. This bottom ring takes all the stress of pulling the shade up and down. Um, and I just want something stronger than just poking it through these two little layers of fabric with a tiny stitch. So I go through the fabric, but I also catch this bottom fold from the hem, which gives me two more strong layers of fabric. And then I will do a couple of tacks. Get that through my ring. I usually do that twice. One, two. And then simply I'll run my needle through that double thread, tie, tie a double knot, and tie that off. And again, I will put a dot of glue there. And that's how I sew the bottom rings on for extra strength. Okay, the very last thing that we're going to do, I mean the whole body of the shape is finished now. Um, the last thing we're going to do is just finish the top edge. I'm going to take these pins out now that everything is sewn in place. And now we're just going to mark our finished top edge. My top edge is going to be at 36 inches, so I'm going to make a chalk mark. This is a line I really don't want to show, so I'm going to just do it with something like chalk where I can, whoops, where I can brush it off. And I'm going to draw a line where my finished top hem is going to be. If you want to overlock or serge the edge of it to keep the layers together and keep them neat looking, you can. But what we're going to be doing is applying Velcro to the back of the shade. Sew your Velcro on just above this finished line. So in my case, I am probably going to just trim off my top and leave about one inch or so of hem. So I'm going to do that. And as I said, you can overlock that if you want or zigzag over the top of it. But as you can see, I've allowed just about a quarter of an inch, um, just barely on either side of, of that Velcro. So I'm just going to turn this over. And I'm going to sew my Velcro from end to end at the top of the shade like this. So I'm going to go do that next. And as you can see, I have overlocked the top of my shade and I have stitched on my Velcro with a double row of stitching top and bottom. And this shade is ready to mount on the board. If you are just stapling the shade to the board, obviously you don't have to apply the Velcro. But since I'm going to show it that way, um, I went ahead and sewn that on. So now let's get the board ready. The length that I cut the board is half an inch narrower than the width of the shade. 
So my shade, my sample shade I'm making is 24 inches. I'm going to cut that board 23 and a half inches. The reason I do that is because I'm going to wrap this board in fabric and that's going to take up some thickness on both ends. So the other thing I want to make sure of is that after my board is wrapped with fabric, so it's gotten a little bit thicker, I want to make sure that that board is never any wider or even the same width as the finished shade. I like to just make sure it's just a little bit behind the finished shade so it's less visible from the front. All right, now that I've got my board cut, I'm going to wrap it. I like to wrap it with a scrap of matching fabric. That way, if you see the ends of the shade, it just ties in with the body and how it looks. And you're just going to want to cut a piece big enough that you can wrap it around and overlap it and have a little bit left over on the edges like this. So I will simply start by... Uh-oh. Tuck see something. I'm going to use an electric stapler this time. Just This is what most people have on hand, so instead of firing up my air compressor, I'm just going to do it this way. But... You could probably use spray adhesive or glue if you don't want to use the stapler. So I've got that one side stapled on and now I will fold my corner in 45 degree angle here and then you can either do a 45 degree angle here like so but I like to kind of straighten that edge out so it looks nice and clean if you see the end of it like that. Boy, I didn't leave myself much fabric, did I? So I'm just going to do it like that. See how nice and clean that looks? I'm going to do that on the other side. Well, that was my problem. It wasn't even a lot more room on this side to work. So again, I did 45 degree angle. I'll straighten it out on the long end and wrap it up like that. And now on this side, tuck it in again just like I did before. Make a little 45 degree angle and bring this up and over the top. Same on this side, like so. And now just put a couple staples along the top. Hold it in place, and there is your covered mounting board. And now all you have to do is peel off the edge of your sticky back Velcro. Just cover up your raw edge with your Velcro like that. And if you want to, you can put a couple staples in to hold it in place. If you don't have staples, you can use a nail or a tack. Um, but I'm going to put a couple in here to allow me to reposition the shade. So if you're doing a Velcro mount, this is finished. If you don't have Velcro or don't want to use Velcro, at this point you would take your shade and instead of just putting it on top like this, you would just lay it on here and staple it in place. So I'm just going to make sure it's centered and lined up where the top of my shade is going to be. Make it nice and even. And there we go. All right, so this is, this is what the top of our shade is going to look like from the front. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the screw eyes and string our shade. So my shade is going to be mounted like this where this is the top of my board 
and this is the underside of my board. And so I'm going to be putting a screw eye along the same line as each row of rings is. And one way to do it is you can measure. You can measure in from the end of the board, but I cut this board a little bit short, and so it's not going to match exactly with the sh size of the shade. So just the easiest way for me to do it is I just line my straight edge up along with the very middle of my rings, where I'm, right where my little knots are tied. And along that same line, I'm just going to make a mark on the bottom side of my board. And I'll do that for each one. Now that that's done, we're going to put a screw eye in the middle of each of these marks. And I would, I would either do it in the middle of the board or a little bit closer to the back edge so that the shade, like if you put the ring up here, it may pull your shade back a little bit. So I tend to put it in the front third of the board. Now what you're going to need to do in order to not split your wood is just make a little starter hole. You can either pre-drill a starter hole here but I do find that the fabric threads get actually caught around the drill bit and can make kind of a mess. So what I usually do is I just take a, an awl or an ice pick like this and I just give it a nice sharp tack. And that will give me enough of a starter hole where my wood won't split, but my screw eyes will go in really easily. Just put a, a screw eye in at each hole. Once you get it started, another trick I, I use to turn it is I'll take that same ice pick and I'll just put it in. And now that makes it really easy to turn. that for all three. Okay, almost done. Alright, next thing you're going to want to do is decide what side you want the cord to draw from. Most people are right-handed, so if you're looking at the shade, they want the cords to be on the right side. But if you're left-handed or for whatever reason you want your application to be on the left side, now is the time to note that. I'm going to go ahead and make it a right-hand draw. So all my cords are going to come off on this side of the shape. So now all I have to do is unroll my cord. And these are going to be three different length cords because one is going to start here. It's going to come up the edge, through the screw eyes, and down the other edge to where I'm going to be pull, being able to pull the cord. A little bit shorter one here, and a little bit shorter one here. So I'm going to start on the short end. And I'm going to just ballpark how much string I need because I'm going to trim these off when I'm finished. So I start at the bottom. I do a nice double overhand knot just like I did when I tied my rings on. You can also put a dot of glue on this if you want to. And you go through all the rings. You go through the screw eye. And we'll just pull it down. Do it again for each other row.
go through this one and we're going to go through this one and we'll do the last one. Also, before I go, this is when I would go ahead and put my weight rod into the bottom pocket. I'm going to go cut this to size and slide that in, and I will be right back. Okay, I have cut, I'm, I'm using this um, aluminum, or the steel rod, which I've cut with a hacksaw. It can kind of have a sharp end on it after I cut it. So instead of bothering with filing it and whatnot, I'll just wrap it in some tape just to keep it from causing abrasion on the fabric on the inside. I'm going to put that in my little pocket that I made. And actually, I forgot to mention this earlier. I cut this weight rod a little bit shorter than the shade because um, I'll sometimes just take a little uh, hand stitching tack and close these layers together. And if this thing goes all the way to the end like that, it's hard to sew it closed. So I'll usually make the, the weight rod about an inch shorter than the shade. And just like I said, just tack that opening closed so your, your rod doesn't slide out or isn't visible. We're almost done, y'all. <laughs> and the very last thing that I do is I make sure this is nice and, nice and straight. And hold it in place and I'll make sure all of my cords are evenly tight. Alright, make sure they all have even tension on them. Pinch it all together and tie a knot near the top of the shade. Like that. If you have a lot of strings, like six, seven, eight strings, you might want to look into getting something called a cord condenser. You can just go online and, and, uh, and Google sh Roman Shade Cord Condenser and um, that'll help you reduce multiple cords down to just one. The next thing I normally do is I will, I will braid the cords below the knot to keep them from getting tangled and keep it looking neat. And I'll braid it to whatever length, a little bit longer than the length that I, I want my final uh, shade cord to be. Um, this is just a sample. I'm just going to make my shade cord, I don't know, maybe come to about here. So, I am going to braid this really quick. See what we've got. I'll pull this up. You always have to train your folds the first time. Show them where you want them. There you go. Beautiful, basic Roman shade. When you install it, all you have to do is use either a cord cleat on the wall. There's all different kinds. They look, they look like this. Or if you prefer to not use a cord cleat, you can put a tension lock on the back of a shade. I'm not going to go into the detail of how to actually do that at the moment, but I just want you to know it's an option. Um, they look like this, but there's all different kinds. 
you're going to put it on while you're doing the stringing, not when it's finished, and it's going to go normally just inside this first screw eye. So if you want a, a tension lock, and that's kind of like what people use on blinds where you just can pull it and lock it to the right or release it to the left, um, you can use a tension lock if you don't want to use a cord cleat. All that's left to do is hang it on the wall and that is super easy. Well there is your fabrication video. Um, the next one I'm going to make will talk about how to determine the size board you need, how to determine if you should mount this inside or outside your window. Um, there will be installation demonstrations and other tips on all the other things that you need to know about Roman Shades besides just how to make it. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel so that you're notified when I post new videos. If you have any questions or if anything's confusing, please just um, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and happy sewing.